Hi, how are you doing? Welcome to the Pulse Shift News. Um, we'll start the video, uh, although we're going to be talking about the magnetic pole shift later on in this video, uh, with a quick look at the sunspots. As you can see, they are pretty much still equatorial and have been that way for the last week. Let's just have a quick look at that. So as you can see, for the first week in September, uh, most of the sunspots that have appeared on the disk have been equatorial. So um, this is a gauge that you know, we're in the minimum of a solar cycle, not the maximum or just coming out of the maximum, um, as the NASA data would state. Uh, just before we move on to the magnetic pole, I wanted to briefly uh, just cover a few observations with the jet streams. But before I do, uh, I'd like to thank those two people that made a contribution towards the channel uh, since the last video. Um, it was nearly one until yesterday. I was due to do this video and I was going to say well, there was you know, a slight slip in the support for the channel, uh, but somebody did make a contribution yesterday. Uh, you know you are, and that other person knows who they are. I can only say big thanks to you, but also a big thanks to anyone that has supported the channel over the period of time that it's been on YouTube. Um, you know, I, I think we all share, uh, you know, a common interest in this. Uh, I think some of us uh, realise how important the topic is and that it is real. And it's a rare event that is occurring in our time. So, um, you know, big thanks to you guys. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, it was two people that contributed. And when you compare the fact that we did have 8,000 people view the video, um, you know, the, the conversion rates are, are really lousy. Uh, you know, I've always said this, if we can raise a bit more, we can do a bit more. And it's the same, isn't it? You know, I know, I know uh, we're all struggling, you know, but if a little bit of a, if, if a few more of us do a little bit more, you know, and we all do it together, we can get somewhere, uh, um, which will help a lot of others as well as ourselves because I think we're all interested in the data. Anyhow, I'm going to move on. Um, what I'd note, and I don't know whether it's come to your attention to you guys that look on this website, um, you know, yourselves, have you noted the gap in the middle of where the subtropical regions are? Uh, there's not a lot of strong activity there at all. Now, at 30 degrees and 60 degrees north and south, uh, we should have a polar jet stream and a subtropical jet stream. And what we've got is even more blatant in the southern hemisphere, you know, just an intermingling of the two, a mixing. And what you can see is this cyclic behaviour uh, over the Middle East, swirling round that, that subtropical uh, weather and dragging it into the polar regions. And it's got to be having an effect. And um, this is a recent activity. If you looked uh, two decades ago at similar satellite imagery over these regions, uh, it would be a different story. There was, uh, you know, separated jet streams. You know, this, this is what I'm trying to, you know, highlight here to people that things have changed. You know, when we're talking on uh, planetary scales, it's very large, very large inertias. They do move slow. But when you compare them in decades, you can see, you know, um, if, you, if you're processing the data, you can see that there has been dramatic changes. And these changes have never been recorded in, in the manner which they are today in, in the entire history of collecting the data. The other thing is, is the magnetic pole migration is an extremely, extremely rare event. Uh, you know, I, I, I try to drive this home to people. It hasn't happened for 780,000 years. You know, we was uh, beating rocks, um, you know, back then, you know, it was the Stone Age. Uh, it was a hell of a long time ago, and there certainly isn't any recorded history of what takes place during a magnetic reversal, despite what some of these um, scientists say. I was going to use the word ignorance, but you know, it's 
I'm not going to go there. Despite what some of these scientists say, that you know, it, the most that will happen is that the needle on your compass will just point in the opposite direction. I can't, I can't believe that they would say such a thing, and it really demonstrates their knowledge of planetary mechanics on how planets, you know, function. The North and the South Poles are, in my view, uh, and and more so to be recognised. Um, in the coming years by you know scientists when they do start to pay attention are the most fundamental attributes to a planet that supports biodiversity and they should know this and they should you know already be promoting this because over the last couple of decades again uh, we have monitored Mars and found that you know at some point in its history it had a magnetic field one thing Mars doesn't have today is an atmosphere and, you know, flowing water on its surface. And it's very likely due to the reduction in the magnetosphere of Mars uh, and the diminishing poles that led to uh, its current uh, situation now where there's no liquid water and there is no atmosphere. Here we are at a time on this earth where this event has not happened for 780,000 years but here's the important thing it used to happen before 780,000 years almost like clockwork on average around 350,000 years the planet would go for a reversal for some reason it's gone over twice that time before going for a reversal and the significant thing is here is it's going through this reversal in our time up until a couple of years ago in 2014 you know during this uh, magnetic migration the pole had been migrating in a virtually you know straight line one single vector heading towards Siberia and we all thought you know at some point the poles were going to go into Siberia until 2014 in the summer when we had um, you know a by chance a ship uh, that takes passengers to the Arctic circles uh, go there and we uh, got a good look at the captain's um, GPS coordinates as he hit the exact spot of the magnetic north pole and we found that where the magnetic north pole was was 200 miles over 200 miles off that vector that was heading towards Siberia now if NASA had been pumping out their data as well as other organizations you know these um, mainstream organizations let's say that they're that we wouldn't have known any different if we hadn't come across that video it was it was you know just by a stroke of luck literally maybe maybe it was just fate that we found it but the important point is it's no longer tracking in a vector and it has for pretty much 100 years so not only in the last 100 years has the pole started to migrate recently within the last two years something new has begun to happen not only this you know the poles used to reverse every 350,000 years and it is believed and accepted that they will reverse but you know I keep saying this hold on a minute why has it taken twice the amount of time to reverse this time comparing what we know with Mars and how that lost its atmosphere through sputtering which is cosmic rays stripping away at the atmosphere uh, due to the weakened magnetosphere on the planet uh, could that be what is set up to possibly happen with Earth and there isn't a scientist on this planet that can tell you definitively that that won't be the case and equally I can't say that it will I'm just saying that it is more likely to be the case because something has slowed down in the regular pattern of magnetic reversals so if there is a cover-up like there is with the solar data at the moment 
with regards to the magnetic data, then we could possibly be facing some very, very, um, I don't know, I don't want to uh, be accused of fear porn here. What I'm trying to say to you guys is that there is something very seriously taking place with our planet right now. And, you know, it would be a bad thing if it was just this on its own. But we have got solar activity, uh, which is also throwing up strange anomalies. Now, they could both be connected. I have spoke to other people about this, and we believe that, yes, they are both connected uh, in some way. Even though the sun does go through, you know, regular solar cycles and magnetic reversals every 11 years or so, we still believe that it could be connected because when we look at what's happening with the sun, the data has been, you know, um, I think conveniently altered to make us believe that solar cycles are lasting longer, but the data still shows the reduction in sunspots and that's a little bit more harder to cover up because, you know, there are solar observers, amateur solar observers that um, would, you know, scream to the high heavens um, otherwise. So, you know, how does this affect then uh, the planetary mechanics? You know, how does the North and the South Pole going through their reversals affect things on this planet? Well, you know, just simply, guys, it should be common sense, really. I know I'm not being uh, arrogant, but it's no coincidence that we have Arctic regions, very cold regions surrounding the poles. Through experiments myself, uh, some of you have witnessed them. Um, when we heat magnets, they weaken. So, you know, a strengthened magnet would be more suited to a colder region, and hence it is in that region. And I've also speculated that, you know, if, if the magnetic poles are better suited to colder regions, uh, then it must also have something to do with the rotational axis, because by, again, no coincidence, this is the other function of our planet in that region. So we've got the rotational axis, we've got the magnetic poles, and we also have, um, you know, sub-zero climates in these regions. So if the poles do migrate, it's going to affect possibly the other two. Um, you know, just keep your eye open. Uh, for the noticeable changes. Well, we've, we've pointed out a few already, haven't we? We've seen the slippage of this colder climate coming further down over towards the equator. You know, with the islands uh, off South China experiencing snow and in some, ex um, you know, some regions for the very first time. We're also uh, noting the facts that this is damaging crops. It's causing massive confusion with farmers in, in the Middle East, um, India and countries such as that uh, with regards to droughts, floods, monsoons, all being, you know, um, sporadic and unpredictable. And as a result, we have companies, you know, I don't have to keep mentioning the name, you know who they are, coming with, um, you know, their you know their products uh, as a result as a result you know to you know uh, sell these poor farmers um, you know a more profitable crop but uh, like I've discussed before the problem is, is they, they they put these genetically modified seeds in that are suited for a dry climate and then all of a sudden they have flash floods and it destroys them so you know, this is having a you know an impact uh, globally, and it's affecting a lot of other things. And you should expect that, because you know it's usually these fundamental things, such as the magnetic pole, the Arctic regions, and the rotational axis, uh, being the most important, uh, usually tend to be the most significant. If they start to you know act abnormally, then they're going to affect everything else on the planet. So um, I'm not going to go on anymore, guys. You know, I can never um, reiterate 
you know, my concerns with what's taking place. And, you know, there's, there's no doubt that they are taking place. These organisations will not deny the fact that these are taking place. We are going through a magnetic reversal. Um, there's an uh, excellent video on the website. I always put a link down there in the comment section for you to have a look at. Um, done by Nova on the magnetic north pole it explains about um, a lot of the things that I've talked about in these videos and it's more professional uh, you know you know uh, organized and put together video uh, for even those people that you know struggle along with me they should be okay with that video so that that's there for them to have a look and you can see what really is going on with this planet so guys I'm going to leave the video here uh, I'll leave you with um, you know the end shot on this of just all the pins uh, over the last hundred years so you can see what I'm talking about the magnetic pole tracking in that, that single vector um, in the next video I'm going to cover um, a bit of progress on the magnetometer station that we're building I've got a couple of new ideas um, I'm not sure whether the fact that I'm running three magnetometers uh, through one receiver um, breakout board and the, the reason is that it won't write onto the SD card so we can log the data of all three magnetometers at the same time is because I think we're consuming the memory on it so I've got a couple of ideas to overcome this firstly I was going to try uh, individual magnetometers on uh, their own data loggers if that works, I don't mind just getting more data loggers um, and recording the data individually off each one and then bringing it all together in some processing. We can still graph three sets of data on one graph. That's not a problem. The other one I was going to try failing that is I've got another uh, type of data logger. I think it's from Spark, right? I'm not sure, but it's an all singing, dancing data logger and I'm hoping that it's got um, uh, the capacity to handle the extra data and I think it's got a bit more memory so I'll do my best it's a miracle I've got it this far I mean at the end of the day it's wireless uh, it's working it, it, our last hurdle is just getting that data logged onto the SD card if I can do that we can start showing uh, weekly um, you know 2000 readings of the magnetic north pole and its heading and where it is and once we get that sorted the data being logged we can then get on with the FMG free um, magnetosphere uh, sensor which is a very highly sensitive coil uh, that will detect the weakening of the magnetosphere that with a rapid moving migrating pole and a rapid de decline in the magnetosphere will give us that heads up that we're looking for of as to when things are really starting to happen and I do believe that we're getting close and the reason for I say that is two years ago you know it left its uh, vector and course towards Siberia and started to move in instead of a westerly direction a southwesterly direction so um, you know, uh, you know, just keep your eyes out for that video uh, during the next week. Uh, the links down there, guys, if you want to support the channel. Um, you know, like I say, the more we can raise, you know, the more we can offer. At the end of the day, it's as simple as that, and that is life, isn't it? Um, the links there, and uh, as always, guys, you know, you enjoy the rest of your weekend, um, and as usual, bye for now.